Now we're going to use Bootstrap to pull together a very basic layout or a template for our application. This will be again a little bit more set up, but once we've got that done, we won't need to touch it again. So we'll start by just pulling in Bootstrap and we will create our navigation at the top, which is uh, probably the most code we'll write in terms of our templating. And then what we will do is eventually build up our product index page, which is really straightforward because we already have Eloquent set up. We can just pass them products to our uh, index view or our home view, and then we can just list them out within a nice box. So we will start by just pulling Bootstrap into our project. So we're gonna go and download Bootstrap here. Just head over to getbootstrap.com and we'll pull this in from the content delivery network. So we need the CSS and we also need the JavaScript as well. So let's go and just pull in our CSS here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a kind of template inside of here. So inside of our views, let's create a templates folder. And then inside of this, we will create a new file just called app.twig. So this will represent our basic template layout. So we'll have a basic document structure here. And of course, at the top, we just want to pull our styles in. Now, we also want to pull in our script. Now, this will assist with the uh, responsive navigation. We'll see this in action in just a moment. So if we just head back over to here and pull in the JavaScript for Bootstrap, and then we will up the top here just pull in jQuery. So if you just head over to cdnjs.com and search for jQuery, we can just very easily pull this in from here. And we're going to be pulling in 2.2.3. So you want to pull in the minified version of this. So let's paste this just up here. And of course, this needs to go within script tags. So let's just pull this into here. And there we go. We're pretty much done. So let's figure out our navigation first and then we'll look at our main content. So we're gonna be creating this within a partial. It makes a lot more sense to do this just so we can keep it nice and separate. So inside of templates, let's create a partials directory. And then within this, let's create a navigation partial that we can include in there. So navigation.twig and we will pull over the markup. Now, I already have the markup ready for this because it's gonna be really boring to type everything out, but what I would recommend you do is just pause the video, go ahead and copy all of this down. What you could also do is pull this over from the Bootstrap documentation and tidy it up if you're familiar with Bootstrap, but either way, you're gonna want this in here and we'll start adding stuff to it later. So just to explain, all this is doing here is we have a uh, nav bar element. Inside of here, we have a fluid container because this is gonna be responsive. We have a header just here. And then over on this side, we have our cart text. Now this is going to be a link eventually through to our cart page. And in here, we will signify how many uh, items are in the user's shopping cart. So once you have all of this copied down, you can go ahead and we'll continue to include this in. So over in app.twig then, we want to pull this in just here. It's really straightforward to do with twig. All we do is say include, and then we give the name of what we want to include, or at least the path of what we want to include. So that's within templates, partials, and it's navigation.twig. So now if we just head over to our page, obviously we're not gonna see anything because we're not using this template. So how on earth do we do this? Well, remember we have our home.twig file. Now inside of here, we have some content and we'll deal with the content in just a moment. But for now, we just want to, as part of this, extend our base template. If you've worked with Twig before, this will be really straightforward. So it's templates app.twig. So now that we have that done, let's refresh and you can see that we now have that template in action. But what about getting our content in this area here? Well, this is slightly different and for this we use blocks. So we define a block out like the following. So we say block content. So this is the name of the block. You can call that whatever you want. And then down here, we just want to end that block. So in here, we'll go the content. So here I'm gonna say product index. Now at the moment, we won't see anything. The reason being is we're not taking the content and placing it anywhere in our base template. So to do this, all we need to do is down here, we're gonna use Bootstrap's container class. This will just nicely center everything. So if I just type in something here, you can see that the content is placed nicely in the middle, directly under the header. And 
all we need to do is replace this with the content that we're taking from each page that we're using this template on. So we just say block content. And then here we just say end block. And now there is our product index. This is just a nice way to keep everything really separate. We don't want to have to require in the kind of header part of this and the footer part of this every time. It gets a little bit messy. So we now have our base template set up. Let's just take a look at the responsiveness of this. So when we pull this in, you can see that we get this drop down. That's why we pulled in the JavaScript for uh, Bootstrap in the first place, just so we could have that functionality in there. So we now have our template set up and we have our product index showing here. Now what we need to do is actually pass our products down to our home.twig view. And we do that, of course, from our home controller. We've seen this working already, but how do we actually pass these down? Well, what we do is as a third argument to this render method, we want to pass a uh, key called products. And obviously what we want to pass down is that list of products that we grab from our database. And using Twig, this is going to be really nice to iterate through them and output them on the page. So just to test this out, let's in here say products dot, or we could just say raw. We'll just see what this looks like. So when we refresh, you can see that we now have an array of different objects, and this is just all of our product information. So with that said, we now need to loop through each of these products and output them. So to do this, we are just going to create a for loop with twig. We just say for, uh, we're going to say index and product. So index is just the pointer in product. So we, this now represents the actual product. And then down here, we go and end that for. So inside of here, then we want to actually output each of the products, but we want to do this within a grid. So bootstraps grid system will take a row just here. And inside of here, we want to create a six column for a small layout and a four column for a medium layout. If you're not too familiar with grid systems, I'd go ahead and look through the bootstrap documentation. So here we have a medium four column and we're going to have this on a small layout as a six column. And we'll see this in action in just a moment. So now what we can do is just write test in here and you'll see that it looks like this. So this is kind of familiar. We'll see a product here, a product here, a product here, and a product here. But what we really want to do is just break this grid here and start a new row. If we uh, actually end up with three items, we want to start a new row and uh, we won't get in, get in a mess. So to do this, it's pretty straightforward. Underneath this, we want to create an if statement. So if the index, that's from here, and we can take get rid of that dollar sign. If the index plus one has zero left over, so we're going to do a modulus of three. If that has zero left over, it means we're at the third item or at the sixth item or at the ninth item. Then we can, well, we'll end this if statement first of all. So we just say end if just there. Then we want to end the row like so, and then we want to start a new row. So let's just run this through. Let's just say product refresh. Now it doesn't look too much different, but if we go and inspect this, you can see, or maybe inspecting it isn't the best idea. Let's just do a view page source. You can see here that we've got a row. We've got a product here, product here, product here. Then we end that row at the third product or the last product on that line. Then we start a new row. So that's just basically what that does. So now we want to actually output the product, but we're not going to do this in here because we might want to reuse that product. So we're going to create uh, over in our views, a products folder. And then inside of here, we're going to have a partials folder. And inside of here, we want the actual item. So we're just going to call this item.twig. That means we can reuse it wherever we want. Now inside of this, we want to create a thumbnail class. So let's do this now. And this will be the product because obviously we have a big image for this. And just here we have an anchor. So this will be able to link through uh, to that product. So for now, we'll just set that as a hash. We have an image in here with a source, which we need to fill in in a moment. And we'll have an alt as well. So we'll fill that in in a moment as well. 
Now down here we have a caption and inside of here we have an H4. Then we have an anchor again because we're going to link through to the product. So the product title will be in here. So we'll just write this in there for now. And then just underneath this, we want a paragraph with a description. So this will be the description. So if we include this item from our um, home.twig file, so let's do an include just in here. So we say include products partials item. Now, what we need to do is pass through that particular product. So remember here, we're looping through each product. So we just say with product, product. So we're giving this a key and this is what we're passing through. And that's important because we need to pick this up within here. So now if we refresh, it looks like we can't find that. So let's just have a look here. Um, oh, of course we need item dot twig. There we go. So now we have the following. Perfect. So the only thing we're missing is an image, but of course, when we hook this up to the data that we actually have available, we'll see all of these come through. So we can forget this page now because we've done everything here that we need to do. We need to focus on our item. So for the product title, this is really easy. Remember, we now have this product variable within our view. We can just say product.title. That gives us the following. And then we have a product description. So in here, we just say product.description, and that will give us through the description for each one. So now we want to update the image. So again, this is pretty straightforward. We have that image in there. So in here, we just say product.image. And then for the title, or for the alt rather, what we can do is say product.title image, like that, whatever you want to do. And there we go. We now have a list of our items on the index page. The only thing that we haven't done is hooked these up to the product detail page, which we're going to be doing in the next part. But as part of the next part, we'll be creating the product controller, which will mean we'll be able to set a name for our controller and then we or each of our routes rather. And then we can link through to them like that. But either way, what we've done is we've set up all of our templating. We have our responsiveness here as well. So you can see that we now have uh, this all set up and when we pull it right the way down, you can see that this still looks OK. So, of course, once you finish with this, you can improve on the design. It's really up to you. We're just using Bootstrap to hurry things along and make it a little bit quicker. But at least we have some kind of structure here that we can start to click on. Now, just before we go anywhere, the last thing I want to do is just head over to my app.twig template. And there's always not a lot of padding at the bottom at all. So all I'm going to do is just up here, say style. And I'm going to say body padding bottom 60 pixels. That will just help us out along the way. But of course, what you want to do is create a separate style sheet for any additional styles that you want. And that just helps to space things out a little bit at the bottom there. So that's it. That's our product index page done, our templating set up, and we can move on to create the product detail page. A big shout out to our friends at Braintree Payments for supporting CoCourse. Mobile development can be complex, but integrating payments no longer has to be. With elegant code and clear documentation to help you out, your business can accept nearly any type of payment on any device with one simple integration with Braintree. Braintree's simple, flexible SDKs make your job and payments easier. You can learn more at braintreepayments.com slash codecourse.